him right on the butt. Oh, oh no. This is the brand new Still 400C. I don't know actually how new it is. I think it's relatively new, I should say. So pretty new saw here. I'm testing it out. I'm in Eastern Oregon with Ace Tree Care. We're in Sisters, a town called Sisters. It's a lot of ponderosa pine. We're gonna be craning out, I think seven of them. And I think it's just gonna be about the perfect job to test out this little guy right here. This saw is kind of in between the 362 and the 462. I actually don't have a 362, but I have a 261 and I have a 462. So the 400C is 67cc saw, 12.8 pounds. Whereas the 462 is 72cc, 13.9 pounds so with the full wrap handle. This one does not have a full wrap. You can buy one separately. The 261 is 50 cc's, 10.8 pounds. And the 362 is probably the closest saw to this one, which I don't have, which is 59 cc's, 12.3 pounds. So this is 0.5 pounds heavier and you get about eight more cc's. It's Mtronic. You know, none of the new saws really have carburetors. I gotta say the, uh, the Mtronic stuff when it first came out, at least with the two ones, had a lot of problems. Everybody liked the carbureted ones better because the computers were just real finicky. They didn't work that good. But a few years later, I really don't think they can be beat, honestly. I think the technology has just gotten so good. You know, you don't have to mess with stuff. Like, uh, for example, this is 4,000 feet elevation up here, a little higher elevation. For every 1,000 feet of elevation you gain, I just found out this from Gordy the other day, for every 4, 000, for every 1,000 feet, you lose 3% compression or like 3% power. So, you know, we're, we're talking like 12% less power. All the saws are going to have up here just in general. But guys that cut at different elevations will tell you that they have to mess with the carburetors when they go from high to low, you know, in elevation. Demtronic, it just takes care of all that for you. I think I paid $870 for this. There's a local saw shop where I live called Cutter Supply in Unumclaw. I asked them, they said $1,000 for the saw. Uh, no bar, flush wrap handle called Madsen's 870. Madsen's cannot be beat. If you can shop there, if they will ship to you, Madsen's in a, so there's Centralia or Chehalis, Washington. That's where you should buy your stuff. That's where I buy all my stuff. So it was a couple hundred dollars more for the full wrap. I didn't get that. Uh, you have to buy it separately. They don't actually offer an R version. They do offer an R version of the 462, 20 inch bar, 28 inch bar, 25 inch bar. I put this 20 inch bar on my Limb Reaper it kind of as a gimmick just to see if it'd pull it. And then I put the 14 back on. And then I put the 20 back on. Actually, this was like the perfect software crane work honestly because it's real compact easy to move around the tree but obviously not as much power as the bigger saws so anyways we're gonna get the crane set up i'm here with with aaron edwards he's a one-man tree show out here and just uh he, he's in redmond we're in sisters it was like a half hour drive here i don't know how to explain it the air smells are just one of those things you just can't really explain the air smells sweet here in these woods i don't really get it but yeah this is Aaron Edwards, here he is. Howdy, howdy. Are you going in first or is the crane? He's gonna pull in. We had a switch from what we were originally planning, so. Okay. He's gonna pull in, then I'll pull in straight behind him. And that way we have more room. Okay, to leave nice. Stuff down. This is truck, BC 1000 chipper. Here's this chip truck. This thing's pretty long. So these are the trees, these are the, the pines. I think the customer <laughs> left us some notes here. There's the crane, I think it's a 40 ton or something. So yeah, we'll get set up. And get get cutting. Oh, yeah, and I will be giving the saw away too at the end of this details at the end of the video for how you can enter for a chance to win this exact chainsaw. I might run these two sort of compare. These are all ported and stuff. It's not and like after, lots of aftermarket parts. Not really a fair comparison. It's really chainsaws. You're really looking at the weight and the cc's that's honestly they measure the saws and cc's <laughs> i don't even know what cc means but it's a it's the measurement that they use so yeah it's just a hair smaller than the 462 i, I really like the 462 I really, really like the 500i. I wish I had one, but I don't have one. Honestly, I think the 500i is just sort of a saw of its own. Um, there's just no competition with it. But I don't have one. I can't really justify buying one because I've got this 462. Anyways, let's test out the 400c, see how it cuts. All right, it's always really important. You always want to spill a little bit of bar oil when you fill it. Um, that's what the pros do. That's why whenever you see me fill a saw, I always like to spill bar oil everywhere. It's just, you know, the, it's just what the saw needs to thrive. It's just better all around. So I'm going to fire this thing up. I've heard lots of different theories about breaking the saw in, like let a few tanks run through it, go wide open. Honestly, I haven't noticed any difference. I've broken in a bunch of saws. The only thing I will say that I think the saws do like is just start it and let it idle for a minute or two to warm up and then just go about your day like normal. So see how easy this thing is to start.
What a view. Wow, look at those mountains everywhere. Wow, it's really beautiful up here. Man, look at that pine. Crazy. It's a hillbilly sling, dude. <laughs> I remember last time I did a ponderosa pine. They don't grow where I live. I mean, they grow if somebody plants them, but they don't grow, na they're not native. And nobody really plants them, you know? I'd probably want to wear gloves if I was working on these all the time. All right, first cut, the 400. It's not even broken in yet. It's just gonna get better throughout the day. It feels really light to me. They want a low stump, but I'll do the low stumps at the end of the day because you know, when you cut real low, there's always a chance you're gonna hit a rock or something to dull your saw. If you are gonna dull your saw, at least you've gotten everything else done. $20 off your JK boots with promo code TREASON. These are the boots I use for climbing. I really like them a lot. This thing in one or two pieces, it probably two, right? Yeah. below the ribbon so cut like at the ribbon favorite thing Gordy makes are those dogs, dude. They grab so well. These actually kind of slide a little bit in the woods sometimes right here. If you look at Gordy's, it's straight at the bottom. The saw right here, John specifically built this for me for crane work. So this is my crane saw. It's a still 261, so it's two sizes smaller than the 400. It's ported. It's got this aftermarket muffler, 20 inch bar. You put this little clip here so I can just clip my lanyard straight to the saw. So this is really like my go-to crane work saw. Let's see how it compares to the 400. I like it because it's like really nice and compact, but good power still. This one's really small. I should probably just cut this from the ground. Yeah. All right. Yeah, did I say this is my go-to crane saw? I meant <laughs> my go-to ladder saw. <laughs> yeah. This is how most idiots with chainsaw videos start. <laughs> I think I'm good, honestly. A ladder with spurs. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this guy hauls. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's like, he's like full throttle. I like it. He's got somewhere to be, dude. <laughs> he's already down at the chipper. interesting so this is my ported 261 which I feel like has more power than the 400 even though it's a smaller saw because it's had a lot of aftermarket work done to it but I do notice Gordy was telling me that you lose about 3% power every thousand feet you go in elevation we're at 4,000 feet so it does feel like the saws are slightly less powerful a lot of the guys that fall timber up in like the Sierra Nevadas some of the sometimes those guys are up at like 10,000 feet and you'll see a lot of those guys they run huge saws like like Husky 395s while they're logging they pack them around the woods and that's just because the bigger engine size there's not as much oxygen in the air right so there's not as much fuel so the saw can't breathe as well so some of those guys they pack huge saws up there and that's because you have more power in your power head at sea level so it's interesting so all the saws are slightly weaker up here but dude i love this little saw i do the 400 is doing pretty good but honestly this this thing's i mean this has had a lot of work done to it like like a lot of work you know the 400 is doing pretty good cutting a lot better than this one see this is skip tooth this is full comp i sharpened this just once on my spur grinder but this this chain might be sharper than this one i don't know i'm just gonna switch the bars and see how it cuts all right yeah it does a 20 inch bar The Monkey Beaver 2.0 harness. It's a saddle that August just came out with, August Henneke. I like this saddle a lot, honestly. It's really comfortable. He just did a real nice job with the suspenders. Even if it's on the first one, but this just feels, I don't know how to explain it. It just feels more streamlined than the other one. And I like the other one a lot too. I'm really happy with this saddle.
first job's over. There's the log deck. Uh, he's actually gonna cut the sums low later on. But uh, yeah, that is the first job out here in Sisters, Oregon. So um, on to the next one. All right, out here at day two, we've got six aspens to remove. They've got, it's called a hornet moth. Um, so they're gobbling them up. This one actually hit the house. So they're just taking them all out. They're all sick. Pretty straightforward, except that, you know, lots of landscaping to avoid. They're actually kind of the perfect size for this 400. And I've got the 20 inch bar on today. So I, I won't film the, the whole thing, but I'll just, you know, sort of get the tops going over and the chunking it down of these trees. And we'll see how this cuts. Aspen is pretty soft wood. I think the saw's gonna have a good day and we'll see and i'll limit and top it with this i i really like this saw i just i need to get more batteries i only have the one you really need two batteries for this saw this is such a nice climbing saw but it really is very expensive when you factor in the fact you gotta buy the saw you really should have two batteries and the charger you're talking like a thousand bucks anyways i'll see you at the top Yeah, so usually it's Aaron and his wife Katie doing these jobs. Usually he's climbing and she's rigging and she does the groundwork. She just had a baby 11 weeks ago, so she's uh, recovering. So I'm down here helping out Aaron and he's doing some groundwork. <laughs> got enough power to do that I guess. Yeah, ready when you are. Yeah, this one's probably gonna wiggle a lot, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> saw away and I'm going to push this if I keep cutting it will go the right way but instead I'm gonna stop and push on it that way I can grab my hands because I can't really let it run it's gonna shake this tree a lot so this way I got control I can put both hands on the stem you ready not bad no not bad it's worse when you're up high it's a little stout pretty stout down here <laughs> Dude, I saw that happen in slow motion. I was like, I was like so focused on like, can I push it over that I, as it started to go over, I was like, dude, that's so close to my cut. That's gonna slide off, but it was already midair. That's so frustrating. I was like really focused on like, can I push this? But I didn't, wasn't even paying attention to the fact that I didn't give myself enough room. That was dumb. Yeah, at least it slowed down the top a lot. Like... Right, ready?
me to start bucking up and moving the wood or would that make it easier or harder for you? Um, like if I started moving this wood? Yeah, we could probably buck it and just chuck it over here for now to get it out of the way. And that way I can get all the tops and stuff out. Okay, I'll just start moving this. I'll start moving it over there then. So I move wood, you move brush. Sounds good to me. Okay. Dude, that's awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, yeah, stay safe, guys. <laughs> it's awesome. It's just a tree service working a couple doors down. They're like, hey, we thought we'd bring you some lunch, and thank you for all the cool content. So, that's really cool. All right, let's get to chunking. All right. <laughs> up with this. I do that on these all the time. What the heck? All right, ready? Yep. Ugh. Ugh. Dude, so violent. Yeah, th there's not a lot of height to work with. It's just like, ugh. I mean, this thing kicks like a mule. I bet it'd be a little smoother if we had a block. Because we're getting friction, because we're getting more friction with this thing, you know? These trees are so wiggly. Nice. That felt nice. Probably just fire with it now. is really good on these things. I think the saw is great. I mean, that's pretty good. Six trees, all brushed and topped out. So I got a quarter battery on this thing. I just fire with the rest of it now. It better be pretty fast if I just do like six to ten inch chunks just right on that rock. They won't weigh nothing. It's just yeah. kind of tedious to clean up, but. So they 
it can't hurt anything. cookies for, for a little while. I'll uh, turn off the camera here, check back in in a minute. I kind of feel like the throttle response actually for a new saw it doesn't seem to be the greatest in this thing I, I don't know if you can hear it you squeeze the throttle and it's not like wah it's like what it like ramps up to it like uh I don't know see I don't know if you can hear it on the the GoPro you know yeah, I don't know if you can hear it it's kind of a little doggish I don't know if you can hear that <laughs> it's out of gas oh man <laughs> I'm like, this thing is a little doggish. I don't know about this. It's not running that great. I had like no gas in it. <laughs> it was running on fumes. <sighs> all right, all right. <laughs> this saw sucks. I gotta put gas in it every wow. little. We'll see how it sounds with a full tank. Maybe this is one of those saws that needs gasoline to work right. <laughs> I feel like with still the 462 and the 500i both of them they just have like instant throttle response and this is really like this feels like a 362 i think this is just a 362 and it's just a little not not quite as peppy it, it, it's fine but i don't know if you can hear it it takes a half second longer to really rev up all right this job's done getting late he's gonna come back and haul this wood later maybe do one more shoot at the 400 and wrap this video up i'll see you tomorrow all right, one last tree, and then we wrap up this review. So I swapped the bars on my 462 and the 400. I put the 28 inch bar on the 400. This tree isn't 28 inches, probably 25 inches actually. But anyways, so it's not like the biggest wood, but we're gonna try the longer bar. I think it was what, 67 cc's or something? You know, the Husky 372 pulls a 28 inch bar, like no problem. This is 72 cc's as well. These saws are actually really close in size, actually. I think this is 72, I think this was 67 or 68 somewhere in there it's actually really close in size to the 462 and the 462 blasts through wood with the 28 inch bar so i gotta get the branches and everything off and then we'll chunk some wood with that longer bar and see how see how she does it's another uh, ponderosa pine out here in bend oregon <laughs> really nice for this you can like hang them straight down fur tends to pop off more easily it's a lot easier on the body you know so aaron's been chipping as we go towards the top here we're gonna just start leaving all the brush We've got a little more to do we'll make a little nest a little crash pad for the wood that way i can just chunk them down in little pieces the customers removed the bricks down there so we've got some nice dirt but it is pretty hard we're worried about stuff bouncing and hitting into the buildings leaving a little fluffy pad. The round should just stay in place.
All right, I'll start bringing some. These first ones will be really light. Look at that fluffy landing. So 28 inch bar, this obviously is not 28 inch wood, but it was just for fun anyways, let's see how this baby does. I've got to say, even with this longer bar, it's really light. This is an Oregon 28 inch lightweight bar. They don't make these anymore, sadly. These are really cool. I think that they are the lightest bars, but they're also the jiggliest. I have a 32 that I've had to bend back straight a few times. They're a little flimsy, but they're really light. I'm here. I could technically fall this stick. I've got the room, but it might sound kind of dumb. But I actually, I'll, I'll cut it firewood up here just because it's less likely I'm going to dull my chain, you know, cutting this on the dropping on the dirt or on the brush or anything. And I'm already up here, it's like easy to push them off. So I'm just going to firewood all the way to the, to the ground. <laughs> Thanks for having me out. Yeah, thanks for coming down. It's awesome. Good work. Thanks. You too. On a hot day, hot three days. Yeah, you can follow Aaron at Ace Tree Care on Instagram. Cool. Thanks again. Thank you. All right, well, I'm back. So my final thoughts on the 400C. You know, I did like this saw. It was kind of interesting. The first two days, it seemed a little sluggish, a little doggish. And the third day, it seemed to perform much better than the first two. I don't know if it's quite in my head. This chainsaw stuff is so like subjective, you know, it's so, you can't really quantify this stuff, especially like, you know, you're up in a tree, you're changing bars, you're changing chains. You're just, a lot of this chainsaw stuff is just like, how does it feel to run it? And it felt like it was better the third day. I put the longer bar on it. I put the 28 inch bar on it thinking that this might kind of bog the thing down. And it didn't, the thing ran even better with that bar on it. That chain was also full skip instead of full comp, so it's, it might be fewer, it's, it's fewer, probably fewer teeth. But I don't know, to, to be honest, it seems like the saw just needed to break in a few tanks and then it really kind of woke up. This saw is kind of a bizarre size because still has so many saws in this size category. To be honest with you, if I had a 362 or a 462, you know, I'd probably, Especially a three, if I had a 362, I would not buy this saw. I think it's a basically a 362. It's a new version of the 362. To me, it felt like running a 362. And Gordy actually said that a lot of the parts are the same. I think they it has like a magnesium piston or cylinder or something. I think they changed like a few things, but he said the gas tank, the handle, a bunch of the stuff is the same. It's basically, if you look at it like an updated version of the 362, I think that's what the saw is to me. That's what it felt like. I think it's a great saw for, you know, probably for ground workers or, you know, this would be like a really nice homeowner chainsaw, you know. It's kind of that line. I feel like to the 261, 362, that's kind of where the professional grade uh, saws sort of start, in my opinion. I thought this saw worked great, to be honest, you know. It just seemed like it needed to break in a little bit, so. It was a good saw. I wasn't like super stoked on it the first two days, and the third day it was like, huh. It started to wake up, but I'm gonna be giving this saw away. It's, it's not a raffle, it's a giveaway. Uh, all you gotta do to win this bad boy is go to guiltytreason.com. I'm gonna have 
basically the $30 sticker that you can buy. And if you buy the, the $30 sticker, then you are entered for a chance to win this chainsaw. So it's about a thousand dollar chainsaw. I think MSRP on this thing's around a thousand bucks. It's a good deal, <laughs> $30, $30 and this thing could be yours. I gave away that Husky 592 and now I kind of want to get one. I kind of regret. I have to get rid of the saws. I can't just keep reviewing saws and just, you know, it's so this is the way I have to do it. So anyways, if you want this saw, go to guiltyoftreason.com, buy my $30 sticker, and this bad boy can be yours. I will ship it internationally, at least I'll try. If I if they tell me no at the post office, then you and I'll have to sort of figure that out. But I think I can, I'm pretty sure I can ship this internationally. So I'm gonna say I will ship it internationally, and I'm pretty sure I can. So anyways, thanks for watching this review, guys. That's, uh, this is the saw. Let me know what saw you would like to see reviewed next. I, I like doing the chainsaw reviews. It's fun, you know, it's fun to just use new saws and they're easy to make because I just do my regular job anyways. And then I just film and, you know, talk about the saw. So what saw would you want to see next? Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Go to guiltytreason.com for a chance to win this bad boy.